on air. Perfect. All right. Uh, all right, guys. We're here at Scaracuse, and uh, you got me, George, and Michael. One of the walkers on The Walking Dead. And uh, this is something that's awesome because this is a show that my teammates, which we've told you guys on air, have gotten me in in season two. Yep. So, like I was just talking to Michael about off air was I watched season two, went back, watched season one, watched season two again, and now we're waiting for season three. Um, so how hard is it keeping all the information that you know yeah. It's killing me. If some of the stuff I want to say, like, oh my god, if you only knew. Like, just, I can't hold it <laughs> in. I'm, once, once those episodes air, I can finally be like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. How did you land the role of a walker? Is it something that you basically just say, hey, I want to do this? Or? Kind, of, kind of. A friend of mine worked on Wardrobe on season one. And she also worked in, like, Netherworld, the big haunted house in Atlanta. She did the wardrobe, and they did all the stuff for the show. And we were just hanging out one day, and I just said, hey, you know, if they need anybody for season two, let me know. I never thought about it again. Well, a couple months later, she calls us like, hey, they need emaciated-looking people for the show. And I'm like, thank you? <laughs> I, I guess that's good. So she said, well, here, send all your information to this email address, send some photos where you look skinny and all that stuff. So I, I had a photographer friend of mine, Robin Cook. She had, I had, like, skinny jeans on and no shirt and, like, creepy lighting and, and emailed those in. And, like, almost right away I got a call back, like, hey, yeah, we want you on the show. We want you to go to zombie school on these dates. Can you go? Like, um, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So there was actually, like, a, like a zombie prep and, like, they yeah, show you how to do it. Yeah, exactly. They have, like, there's a method to the madness where they, they want everybody to kind of be uniform in how they act and, and not just be some straight people just running off, running rampant. And yeah. So. Now, what's the hardest part, let's say, during the filming? What would be the most difficult part for you to ask a walker? I mean, because you have all this makeup on. It gets, obviously, like you said, just before we went on air, it's hot in Georgia. Oh, yeah. What's the hardest part for you? Uh, is I guess the make of it in general at first is just really uncomfortable and after a while you get used to it but you don't even realize it's there and then when they take it off that's then you're like it's almost like it's missing you because you feel so much lighter but the heat is insane even at night scenes it's 100 degrees in the summer and then as you get to the like we'll be filming in October November it'll be 20 degrees outside frost covered snowing and that was a good thing about the barn being on fire is we were all able to stay warm. Oh, yeah. I was just about to ask you about the barn scene yeah. being on fire. That, it was freezing on that night, right? Oh, yeah. It, there was actually frost on the ground and snow. So that actually felt pretty good. Oh, yeah. Because we were in the barn and they had the little tubes that they could turn the fire up and down for the shots. And I'm on the ladder chasing Rick. So they got the tubes like from me to you. And they would turn the fire up and you're like, oh, that feels so good. <laughs> and then they would turn it down and you're like, no, turn it back on. <laughs> That was pretty cool because I remember seeing an interview on television and someone was saying how um, with the barn collapsing, they were actually, the cameras were turned to something else and then they heard it or whatever and then just like it worked perfectly yeah. where you could fully see everything start yeah. to collapse and you know it was the, 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 film, the film footage that they have, the cinematography, everything that they, they do is, is totally, to me in my opinion, different than almost any other show that's out there yeah. because the craftsmanship of you know and the effort and the time that they put into making a zombie and you know constructing you a walker and it's like you know it's not just a regular television show where you know the extras just go in there and they're sitting in and just you know seat fillers or whatever yeah, it's yeah. Um, you guys are the show yeah yeah that's the funny part because we're we, we're ex, like you said we're extras but we we kind of feel like we're the, the zombies as a whole are a character yes. oh yeah oh yeah without you guys there is no walking yeah and the good thing is everybody that works on this show are huge zombie fans and they're up the genre so so they know how they want it to look so it's not just some guys who don't know anything about zombies filming just a zombie going yeah. so they know how they want the scenes to look and how so that's how it comes across it's so creepy sometimes now I know that uh, we do have a mutual friend, Rodney Hall, who's been in uh, a bunch of episodes. Uh, now, as far as you, say you as a walker, how many episodes do they normally put someone who's been 
like I would say camera time like up close shots now like you you've been on camera you can physically see you know close up how many times would they use someone like that um, I know it, it kind of depends on the person and, and their abilities and how how well they get along with people because there's maybe a dozen of us which are like mainly the ones they're using this season that they have their favorites and they'll, they'll kind of like show a little favoritism and, and use us a little bit more than other people but I mean so yeah maybe a dozen of us get somewhere good every episode and every once in a while they'll be like oh you've been on too much we'll stick you in the background and somehow we still end up making our way in front of the camera but... <laughs> that's pretty cool now you know what scene I thought was absolutely wild is this uh, season one or two where uh, I think Sophie just went into the woods um the uh, all the walkers walking down the, uh, yeah. the that, road. Yeah, that's the first episode of yep. season two. That was the first episode of season two. Now, how wild was that? I mean, there was hundreds of you guys. Oh, yeah. They, they, they actually added in, added some in the back, like CGI. Mm-hmm. But there was, I think, like 180 of us on set that day. That's awesome. And, and it was funny because when this scene that you see, when they first noticed a couple of walkers in the roads, there's just like three of us and then the characters kind of look around and then when they, but then when they look back that we're all out there so there's a semi laying on its side on the highway and we're all hiding behind it like you know, we're all out of camera range so just trying to hide before we come out of our scene and one of the PAs thought it'd be funny like hey wouldn't it be neat if when you guys went out there that you kind of stood in the thriller pose <laughs> so we're like yeah that would be awesome so and he's like, no, 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 don't do it. And we're all like, it's too late. We're doing it. Yeah. So when they, 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 they call it the action and everybody goes, the first three stra- straggler walkers go out, then they cue us. And we all go out there and throw our arms up. <laughs> Even our makeup guys are behind us with their arms up. And you hear them coming over the, those walkie-talkies going, what are they doing? Is that Thriller? And they're like, oh, that's funny. You now go back to your one. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Now, at the, uh, the, the last episode of uh, season two, you guys just pretty much tear apart Jimmy and uh, yeah. the other characters. And how awesome was that? I, I was watching the Talking Dead, and it's oh, like yeah. Jimmy's actually terrified of being eaten alive by zombies. Oh yeah, that's a real fear of his. <laughs> he was just talking about that at Dragon Con a couple weeks ago, and and for that to happen, it was kind of terrifying. And and John Bernthal plays Shane. He's he doesn't like zombies either. So really? so we'll all go walking past him, and he's just cussing and mumbling under his breath. And it was pretty that's funny. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, for the most part, on average, obviously, um, you know, you've been in numerous episodes. What would you say is either the least or the most amount of time that you've spent just getting ready, just getting the, the makeup on and seeing all these different hairdressers? The least amount of time that I got in there was literally like a minute because it was like the, the one time that I wasn't featured, I, they ended up putting a mask on me and telling me to go kind of stand in the back but I still ended up up front with a mask on. But then um, all the other times it's been featured makeup and a couple times I've had mid-ground where it's like the airbrush stuff. And that's maybe like 20 minutes to get that on. But the other ones, average, I'd say three hours. My longest has been right at five. Five hours. And that one wasn't even for the show. That was for a photo shoot that we did for all a bunch of promo stuff. So. Now there's, there's, a, there's a picture behind us. How long did that take you right there? That, that one was close to four hours. Yeah, I mean, the detail on that's pretty, pretty oh, amazing. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Now, how, how does Hollywood blood taste? I mean, I heard it's pretty nasty. It depends. Sometimes they, they'll flavor it with stuff. Yeah. and um, Like, they got a little mouth stuff that you switch around to make it black. Sometimes it's like mint flavored or bubblegum flavored. Oh, awesome. Now, when Sophia got killed... Um, Madison Lentz, they, they tried to make it nice on her and kind of comforting and stuff. So they had like all these different flavors of the, the mouth gut for her. And luckily afterwards, we got all the leftovers of it. So there was like chocolate bubble gum and That's mint awesome. and some of that. Pocket. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's still, it's still kind of nasty, but it's, it's not bad. Now, the little thing right? Yeah, Eddie Miller. Now, I remember in the first episode, the way Addie was was shot from Rick and the way oh, she yeah. just fell back, it was insane. Oh, you yeah. know, and then... Rick did the same thing with Sophia, and she just kind of fell. You know, and I was like, dude, you know, the way they did it with Addie was just perfect. You know, oh, yeah. Addie just freaking flying back. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, and I was just thinking to myself, it just takes, like, so much gore, you know, just to do it. You, know? you see a little kid doing it, and it's like, oh, shit, man. You know, oh, yeah, it, 
it, it's amazing to watch because if you watch it looks like her head bounces oh. off the pavement yeah. and, and you'll see us grown men out there and we're like trying to slowly lay down <laughs> so we don't get hurt and like throw out a hip or something yeah. and, I mean, but yeah, there, there are times when we take shots and we literally have to like leap backwards and fall down on a, you guys like a, a beating box up. oh yeah you'll, you'll come home hurting the next day and the sun burns because the stuff they put in your hair is literally just conditioner so it like mats your hair down so your scalp your scalp is like right there so out on the highway in June in Georgia you, you gotta wash your hair out at the end of the night and you're sunburned and oh it's crazy so now um, where are you from where do you live I'm, I live in Warner Robins Georgia which is about an hour and a half south of Atlanta and it's about that from, from the studio I think the studio is a little south of Atlanta Peachtree City. So, like most of the people that um, you know work, you know, as actors or actresses, um, are they mostly mainly local people? Yeah, most of them are. Um, especially the new season, they're in the town of Woodbury, which is Sonoya that they turned into Woodbury, and, and all the people in the town are actually people in the town. And then most of the the walkers, they're all like from the surrounding area. Yeah. A couple of times there have been people that have come in from like Tennessee and some people have flown in and like won the walk-on roll thing where they come in from like Colorado. That's pretty well. That's pretty well. Now, I mean, uh, I was going to ask. Just do a brain for <laughs> Well, since, um, you know, starting with The Walking Dead and doing these conventions and stuff, um, how has that changed you? Like, it's... Kind of surreal because I'm, I'm used to being on the other side of the table, and, and now to be on this side, and people saying that, "Hey, I'm I'm a huge fan of yours," and you're like, "I have fans." Uh, okay, it's <laughs> pretty wild, right? Yeah, it's it's crazy. And plus, getting to hang out with some of the other actors from all the movies and shows that that I grew up terrified as a kid, and now I'm hanging out with them. It's just like, the coolest thing on the planet. Well, it's well deserved. I mean, you uh, worked your ass off, for it, and you're out there busting your ass, you know, so it's well deserved. Oh, thank you. you know? Now, prior to, um, you know, being on the show, what did you do for a lifestyle? I've done a ton of different things. Um, I was a, a chef for a while. I actually went to culinary school, became a chef. Um, I, I worked on the Air Force Base in my town. I was I painted the C-5 airplane. I mean, I wanted to be an architect when I got out of high school. I mean, I'm just kind of one of the things, I, I start one thing, I get really good at it, and I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah, so I go do something else. Yeah. I hear you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, is there anything that you can tell us about season three? Nothing that we'll get into. All we'll just. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, is, is it going to be gorier than the last one? It's going to be very gory. From what I'm told, the first episode has more kills in it than all of season two together. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Now, when you when you sign up, um, when you go in, is there like you guys are basically under like a uh, I forgot what they call it, like a like a non disclosure? Yes, agreement. Like, yes, exactly. Yes. Um, do they tell you guys? Well, this is what you can talk about, and this is what you can't talk about, or it's basically you know don't give shit away. Yeah, pretty much don't <laughs> give shit away. We find out we're going to sue you for a hundred thousand oh. dollars. And amazingly enough, there are people that have done that. that. Like, one of the guys that played Michonne's Pet Walkers in the very last episode, mm-hmm. he was tweeting it, like, right afterwards. And then he's, he thought better of it and took it down. Well, one of his 50 followers had already retweeted it. And they said, well, like, within, like, the end of the day, it was already the, the front page of IMDb, like, everything that he did that day. So he got sued. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. No. Keep you off guard and... Like people yeah. enjoy no, and the thing that bothers me about it is, like with Merle, everybody knows now that Merle's back. That was supposed to be a complete surprise. Yep. Nobody was supposed to know, and somebody on set actually leaked a picture of it. And so AMC finally had to be like, well, everybody knows he's back. We might as well just go ahead and say, hey, Merle's back. Yeah. But, you knew he was going to come back anyway. <laughs> well, you hoped he was going to come back. Yeah. With a vengeance. Yes, of course. And, you know, that's that's also got to be something hard because it's like, you know, you're doing one thing every single day and then just like, all right, I can't say anything, I can't say oh, anything. Yeah. October 14th, please hurry up, AMC, yeah, yeah. let's go. Like, yeah. um, 
you know, is that that's got to be such a, like a huge difficult part of your job, especially going to the convention, doing these interviews and stuff like that, oh, and yeah. just having guys you know. like us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, Madison Lynn's had played Sophia, and last year at DragCon in Atlanta, everybody's asking her, "Oh, how's it? How is it to be on the show and everything?" And she had to like smile the whole time, knowing she had just gotten killed on the show and couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> so they're like, "How is it on the show? Do you love the season?" And she's like, oh, "Yeah." <laughs> so, it was kind of funny. Of course, I can tell you, I die a lot. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was You're really already bummed. dead. Yeah. Yeah. I was bummed out when I saw Shane, man. He, he, he died. I, I really enjoyed his character. I thought he was great. You know? yeah. And just to see him get taken out by Carl, really? Well, you know, in the comics, he, he, he did it in the comics. In the, Carl the, took the him first out. comic, too. Yeah. Yeah, he shot him. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, even for me, like I had said to you prior, was. You know, I really don't get involved in the television shows, but it's the dynamics of this show, and it's like, and it, it's interesting because it's it's a show like this, which actually makes you think. It's like, you know, is he being sincere? Is yeah. there, you know, this, exactly? And it's you know, you, you you're always your mind's going everything, and then at the end of the episode, and they're like, you know, to, stay tuned for next week, you know, preview, and you're like. No, come yeah. on! Just play the goddamn thing over. Yeah. Like, let's I want to know now. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like you know, then at, at the at the end of, of season two, it's like you know, the pan up to the prison, no. and it's like, all right, you know, you're going there. All right, what's going on now? And it's like you kind of you know, you wait for the Talking Dead. You hope that they spill something. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, come on, you, you're looking on the Facebook page and this and that, and um, you know, it's basically like that anticipation. And from the the season finale to the season premiere, you already got the whole season three already planned out in your head. Like, oh, this is going to happen, oh, and yeah. this is going to happen again, and this person's going to die. And, um, and that was there, when you guys go to the sets, is there things that, like, you've seen yourself or noticed yourself um, thinking that are coming true? Or you just have basically no idea, and you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, honestly, it's almost to the point now where we have no idea. When you come in, you have no clue what's going to happen that day, and then when you see stuff, I mean, you're just completely geeking out. I mean, there was one day that I came in, it was me and one of the other walkers, and within the first ten minutes, when we're going over the script with the actors, I mean, we've had our mind blown like six times, like, oh my god, oh my god, and it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. Are the, the crew that you're working with, as far as production writers is there like any time with not necessarily the third season not to give it away but the first or the second seasons that you know you've heard this is how it's going to go and then you get there and they're like no we're totally changing this it's got to change this or do they really stick to what they have it sticks to it pretty much I mean sometimes as we're filming it might change a little bit like oh that didn't really work we'll kind of do this and stuff but for the most part, it, it kind of sticks with what they've ever written. Now, when you go in, you sit there for five hours, get everything on, get all together, get zombified. How long are you guys normally shooting for? I'd say average about 16 to 18 hours. My longest day was almost 22 hours. Just filming? Yeah, just filming. Just, I mean, completely just working through, trying to get every scene that they can. It was pretty crazy. Can you imagine? 22 hour day just filming. Well, the bad thing was then I had to get makeup off and then have a two hour drive home. So it was like a 26 hour day. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> now, they take everything off of you, right? The makeup and yeah. everything. Yeah. There's only once that I was able to go home with the makeup on, and it wasn't the feature makeup, it was just the airbrush on makeup. It was because they were so far behind because we shot so much that they had to get all the main people out that they're just like ah oh, here you can go home and take it off yourself so I, I've got to drive home and get gas with zombie, <laughs> look, zombie makeup on <laughs> so in the middle of Georgia I'm like oh great I'm going to get killed out here <laughs> every guy's got a rifle every other problem. yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so luckily I made it so home <laughs> so now like what is your favorite part of you know saying that I'm the walking dead What's, what has been like your favorite part or maybe your favorite episode or you know on camera or off camera um honestly some of my favorite stuff i'm not even in it's but my my favorite part about the show is just being a part of it just to 
to say that you know I'm actually doing this, it's, and it's hard to believe that I'm still doing it sometimes. But I have to kind of step back and think, that, you know, this is real. I'm not dreaming this. So this is really happening. You're doing a great job. That's uh, why you, know, you come back and you're uh, doing a great job, and just, you keep providing us with a great show. So uh, yeah. that's that's what we love, you know. I wish I could say that was that was all me, but I'm just one of the guys in front yeah, of you. You know what? You're a big part of it. You know? But you know what? If everybody says that, you know what I mean? Like that's your team, yeah, and that's sure. that, you know that's one thing. Like you said, you have you know say a dozen or so of you that are consistently there. You guys consistently see each other, and you got you know doing a rotation of you know who's got camera time, this yeah. and that. And if it wasn't for you, Sorry. where else would it be? Yeah. And yeah, you know. If one of you got pulled out, yes, the show would still go on. But you guys also, like you had said, they, they give you like a sort of like a zombie course to go through. Yeah. But you also add your own little flavor in it too. Oh, yeah. Your own, your own personality or your own, you know, actions or facial expressions and things like that, which you know give it you. Um, and that's got to be cool. And it's when you when you guys are filming, if you are not on screen at that moment. Are you able to watch what's going on, or is it like, oh, yeah. ah, just go, you know? Oh, yeah, especially the scene with Michonne, when she first shows up, and she saves Andrea and cuts off the walker's head. We're, they were doing kind of like down in a little river, like valley sort of ravine thing, and all the rest of us are over the top of the hill, like, looking <laughs> over, watching. Like, oh, my God, I want that? someone to take shots from behind seats. I'll yeah. post them up. Like, yeah. that's got to be awesome, looking up on, like, a ridge and just see, you know, a hundred walkers up there, just, yeah. like, staring <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> knowing, you know, even knowing that it's, you know, it's television, I'd be like, oh, damn. Imagine yeah. this is real. Oh, yeah. And it's funny is because before I even really, when I first started watching Walking Dead, um, we were all talking about, we had just finished um, one of our episodes of, you know, our radio show, and we were talking about the zombie apocalypse. And I brought in, like, tri race boards <laughs> into our office. And we're just, like, sitting there. And we're thinking of different things. And and then we're like, you know what? Like, let's not write it down. Let's just have a radio show. So we, we flipped back on a mic, started the server up again. I'm like, whoever's <laughs> listening, this is SOP Survival Guide. And, Mike, it was some funny shit. Like, it's, it, it, we, but you know what? It was some good plans, you know? I'm going to say that we learned a little bit from The Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now if there was um, ever to be some type of outbreak, um, what, would, what would be your survival guide Yeah. and your tactics that you've learned um, for being your walker? I would learn that there really is no safe place, but I would probably say get as many supplies as I can and find an island because you're going to be probably the closest. I mean, granted... They can't swim, or you never know, but you know, they don't have to breathe, so they can just. Unless Michael Phelps is on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, they, screw yeah they can just like walk along the bottom and just pop back up on the <laughs> other side. They ain't gonna worry about drowning, so. Maybe the current would wash them away before they got to the island. Now, what would be your uh, zombie apocalypse backpack? What would you have in there? The first thing would have to be Bark's root beer. I'm a huge Bark's root beer kind of guy. I, I would die without it. But, um,. Other than that, I have no clue. I would just, any weapon I could find, quiet weapon, other than that, long and quiet, with a machete and spear, I don't know, something where I can like reach through fences and not get too close. Yeah. That's one thing we definitely learned with the crossbow. Yeah. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Zombies are sneaky bastards. Yeah. yeah, they are. Very, you know, very swift, does the job, silent, pull it out, it's reusable. Exactly. <laughs> um... Now, is there any expectations that you have for the show, or do you, is there anything that for yourself that you want to see progress, or what, what is your your long term goal for the show for you? Oh, well, for me, like being on the show, I just want it to go forever, just as long as it possibly can. But and but at that and just. Not go so long that viewers are like, oh my god, would the show just end already? But I mean, as long as it stays consistent with how it is now and, and I mean, it's still entertaining and still thrilling, then yeah, dude, I'll stay on it as long as you want me to. But if it starts to drag and people are like, oh my god, I wish they'd put something else on, I'm tired of the show, then, then yeah, cut me out. So. That's cool. Um, now, since starting to do this on, on your quote unquote off season, um, 
where else have you traveled? I mean, you said you went to Dragon Con, now you're here at Syracuse. Yeah, I've done shows in Kentucky, Tennessee, um, North Carolina, and Charlotte. I've got another one in Charlotte, not in Charlotte, but like Crystal Coast Con. I'm not sure where it is. It's in North Carolina. I got it coming up. Um, I think there was one. I was supposed to do one in Michigan. Uh, I may be going to Germany in March for one. Awesome. I love Germany. It's gorgeous over there. Oh. It's all over the place. I've been in Florida. I need to go west coast. It's warm on the west coast. Yeah, yes. Tell some of Cali. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I also work with a um, a booking agency, uh, Resurrection Talent, uh-huh. who Rodney Hall is also a partner with, and he's done a, a few things with us already, and gone out to like Sloss Furnace in Alabama, and done a few other things. Uh, maybe we got to get you on the bill and have you travel because that'd be awesome. Um, you know, especially being you know a fan of The Walking Dead, and then that'll be once the season starts going and we can talk a little bit more and you know maybe get a little bit more information. And uh, it, it's it's just interesting because it's like it's something that every you have half of half of the country who's like it ain't gonna happen. It's impossible. It's physically impossible. Yeah. It'll never happen. And then you go on the CDC's website, and there is the, there's a whole preparation guide. It's all oh, what to do, and then it's like you know what? Well, it's not really that far fetched as you know one may think. Yeah, you never know. But you know, I, I, I definitely think that it's uh, it's something that would be interesting. So, but um, I think the worst part about it is I think all my friends think if something were to happen that I would instantly be a zombie. Like, I think I would try to survive as long as everybody else. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, the thing is, in The Walking Dead, it's terrible, and everybody already has it. Yeah. And being bit just you know, amplifies it pretty much. You know, it speeds the process up. So, you know, at that point, it's like, you know you're screwed either way. Yeah. And you kind of just survive as long as you could until you turn oh, yeah. you know? So, either way, it's an amazing show, and I'm just glad that Christina showed me it. Because when I first watched The Walking Dead, it was the first episode. I'm like, I'm not going to like this show. Blah, blah, blah. And the first episode, man, just got me. Like, holy crap, this is actually happening. That's the, the funny thing is, I think the first episode did that to everybody. Yeah. I had a lot of friends who already read the comics, and I never had. But we decided to watch it at my house one night. And the first episode, close. Yeah. I, I mean, that was in for the long haul. That's it. Now you're like, America's the number one show. Man. Yeah. You guys yeah. are just huge. So that's awesome. And that's you know that that's one thing that's that's interesting because it's like the amount of, of support and even if you go on their Facebook page like the amount of people that have liked the show and that comment oh, yeah. on it it is huge oh, and yeah. especially with you know me getting into it probably the third or the fourth episode of the second season and seeing that many people that I was like wow like this is this is crazy and the following that it had after just one season of being yeah. on air. Oh, and uh, you know how many and they have like the Walking Dead they have the Talking Dead and all these different things about you know we're, we're, we're ready we're, we have this you know we're ready for it and you know you guys are going to keep on coming and that's that's definitely something that's awesome because I finally have a show that I love oh yeah <laughs> yeah and he's, I'm telling you this guy never watches shows I'm sorry <laughs> it's so hard to get him into a show that we like you know it's funny because I have a lot of people that I know that are the same way. They're like, I just don't like watching shows, and I only started watching it because you're in it. And then now they're like, I can't stop watching it. Yeah. It's just one of those shows. So it's just one of those shows you just kind of want it to keep playing throughout the night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all right, man. The, word, the, weed, yeah, the weight is worth it. So that's it. So season three. How many out of out of all the episodes? How many do you feel that you've been on camera for? And you know exactly. Well, I, I know I've been in five so far, and I think they're on like seven or eight now. They had to skip forward a little bit due to some somebody's filming schedule and stuff. And I hate to say they they had to take a break from me because those five episodes I was featured so heavily. So now they're like, hey, give somebody else some camera time. So, so which episodes can you? Should we look for you the most? Because I'm going to be looking for this. Um, the fifth episode, I know. Is, and plus, it's going to be an amazing episode because our head FX guy, Greg Nicotero, directed it. And when he directs an episode, expect great things. Awesome. So that one's going to be awesome. Um, 
but the first episode's gonna be crazy. I think I'm a few different zombies in that episode, and it's that's like the Kickstarter. And it, like I said, there's so many kills in that first episode, and so awesome. much action that it, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be hard to keep track of everything going on. That's, awesome. that's one thing I love that you know, as as a walker, it's you're not just portrayed as one person. Oh, you no. can, you know, you go and change makeup, this and that, and totally somebody totally different. Oh yeah. Um, now, um, you know, between everything that's going on, and like you were saying, how um, you know, you know, at least five episodes. When you guys film, so I'll put a storyboard. Do you guys? Do they film everything exactly in chronological order, or is it sometimes you feel them bouncing around, and it's like, yeah, let's some, get this because we're here. Yeah, sometimes they have to do that just for. Uh, location schedules and stuff like that they, they kind of have to do a little bit of sequence but for the most part it's it's all in, in sequence so, that's cool. well you know I can honestly say I'll be su- I'm super excited for the new you know new season and I can't wait to see what The Walking Dead and you have in store for us oh, yeah. um wish we could talk about it <laughs> I wish I knew about it um and I know Matt's gonna kill us cause this is his number one show. <laughs> Matt, Brian, and Carolyn, yeah. the three members of the team that uh, couldn't be here. They would have killed everyone. And, and that, that was the thing because, like, um, even on our Facebook, um, you know, we have our, our group's Facebook shows at the Paranormal. And the season finale, I put, and I was like, watch this season finale. And it's like, I didn't post it as, as my status. I put it as the group because we were all, like, sitting there just like, <laughs> like we were like little kids just like watching like what's gonna happen like and uh, you know we're, we're super excited and you know it's, it's awesome that you're a part of such a such a great show and you know something that that we we all like and we can kind of relate to because you know we're into the paranormal but zombie shit it's, it is paranormal you know it's it's, it's something that you know sparks our interest and you know I thank you so much for you know Taking the time out of the convention and out of your day, oh, no problem. To uh, you know, to get to talk to us, and you know, I can't wait to uh, to get some feedback from this because, like I said, you know, it's something that is awesome for us. And if you wanna, if you wanna, uh, you know, anytime you wanna reach out to us, just let us know, man. Oh, totally. And we'll, you know, interview you again because I mean, you're a great interview, and you know, just give us a call. And you can Oh, fall sure. into our show, man. We'll, we'll, every Monday night, you know. Oh, we'll, nice. So whenever you want to just jump on me, just give us a shout. Or, <laughs> nice. or reach out to you. It doesn't matter. Say, I'll call you like every Monday night. Hey guys, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, you guys are about to air, right? <laughs> but keep but, in contact, man. Awesome. It's oh, really definitely. awesome to meet you and to have this interview. Oh, thank awesome. you. Now, if you want, uh, I see that you have a new website. If you want to plug that, yeah, oh, brand new. It's uh, michaelkoski.com. M I C H A E L K O S K E. Um, it's still being built, so there's kind of kind of working out how it's going to look. And stuff. It's brand new. It's got stuff from a, a little independent film that I was in called Level Seven, but it's another zombie movie. So hopefully, we'll do big things. Yes. Well, like I said, thank you so much for sitting in and. Uh, let us sit at your table at the convention. Like I said, we're at Syracuse here, right outside of Syracuse, New York. Um, and uh, thank you so much for, for being a part of our show and Misguided Souls. Oh, no, thanks for having me. All right, guys, this is Chris and George signing out. Later. And uh, have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.